Oh, get ready, the evening shadows fall. Don't you hear the Eliezer call? There's gonna be a wedding, our joy shall soon begin. When the camel train comes in. Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. If you like to follow in the reading of the Holy Scripture. For now we see through a glass darkly, a mirror. For now we see through a glass or a mirror darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. That's the part we're going to focus on in this message, to know, even as we're known. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for opening our understanding for awakening us to the truth, awakening us to righteousness, Lord, to understand who we are, whose we are, who we belong to, to understand who our Creator is, who our God is. We pray, Lord, that your people, God, will hear the Word of God, and be comforted, and be encouraged, Lord. We ask that you bless and anoint your people to hear the truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise God. But then shall I know, even as also I am known. That is powerful. To know even as I am known. Somebody knows me better than I know myself. Are you listening? Did you know that God knows you better than you know yourself? And he said that you can know even as you're known. Praise the Lord. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Notice here, but then, face to face, face to face, to know Jesus 
is to know the Father. Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Are you listening? When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. Praise God. He's the very expressed image of the Father. Blessed be his name. He's not the Father. There are those teaching that today, that Jesus is the Father and the Holy Ghost. No. The expressed image of the Father is seen in Jesus. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. Jesus says, have you been with me all this time and you have not known me, Philip? Praise God. I and the Father are one. Amen. Praise God. Our understanding is going to be illuminated, folks. The Lord is going to reveal to us more and more the truth from the beginning, before the foundation of the world. Are you listening? Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. How are you listening? God is telling Jeremiah, before he was formed by God, created and formed by God in the belly of his mother, God says, I knew thee. I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. What a message. What a scripture to help people to understand about abortion. This idea that there's no life there at conception. And they go further than that. Further than that, nine-month abortion? Dear God, that's nothing more than murder in the womb, folks. And they've even shown where little, little fetuses of the, that little life in there has tried to move out of the way as it was being aborted. Are you listening? No, God makes it very clear. He says, I knew thee before thou camest forth out of the womb. Before I even formed you in your mother's belly, I knew thee. I knew thee. Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. 
two beautiful scriptures to protest abortion. Are you listening? Put those two scriptures together. It's hard to to believe that there is not life at conception. But as the Lord said to Jeremiah, before he was even formed in the womb, I knew thee. Amen, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. I looked up that word in the Greek, never. And it means at any time, I never knew you. But yet we see in the scripture, God saying to Jeremiah, I knew thee before I formed thee in the belly, before I formed you in your mother's womb. I knew thee. And here he's saying to those that are workers of iniquity, I never knew you. I never knew you. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. And now we see through a glass or a mirror, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. Praise God. To know, even as I'm known? How well does God know you? Because he said to those that were workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But they were going through all the motions. They, they thought they were casting out devils. They thought they were prophesying in his name. They thought they were sitting in his presence and eating in his presence and drinking in his presence. And he said, I never knew you. I never knew you. Amen. To know, even as also I am known. You talk about waking up, folks. Amen? You talk about being awakened. To know, even as also I am known? Praise God. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 4, according as he had chosen us, when? When did he choose us? He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Are you listening? God said to Jeremiah, I knew thee. Before you were formed in the belly. Before I formed you in your mother's belly, I knew thee. Before the foundation of the world, I chose you. I ordained you. Are you listening? I sanctified you. 
Amen. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Before the foundation of the world. Amen. God knew you. He knew you. He had a plan for you. He had chosen you. Just because God makes a choice in his foreknowledge, in eternity past, doesn't mean that folks are going to choose his choice. Amen? It's God's choice that none should perish, that none be lost. But not everyone chooses God's choice. Amen. Before the foundation of the world, God made a choice based on his foreknowledge of knowing the choice that you would make. Isn't that something? God knew before you was even formed in your mother's womb the choice that you were going to make, that you were going to choose him. Amen. Praise God. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children, the placing of sons. Heliosia. By Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Can you imagine? God did all of this. All of this was done before the foundation of the world. It was all done in Christ. It's finished. It was all completed in Christ. In the heart of God, in the mind of God. But it still has to be carried out, still has to be acted out. Amen? Can you imagine knowing as you know? The scripture says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And he whom the Son of Man shall make free shall be free indeed. You know how many are running around, walking around today on this earth that have no identity? They don't know who they are, and they don't know whose they are. They don't know who they belong to. Amen. And they're trying to find where they belong. They're trying to find out where they fit. Amen. Aren't you glad the Lord found you? He came looking for you. Amen. Came to seek and to save that which was lost. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. God says, I knew you. I knew you, Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb, you were in my book. Amen. Now you can be blotted out of his book. You can be blotted out of the book of life. It's up to you. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. 
God keeps perfect records of everything you say and do. And those that are not in the book of life, they're going to be judged out of the books. Every act, everything you say and do is going to, is going to be, you're going to be judged for. Whether good or bad. Are you listening? There's coming a tribunal. There's coming a judgment day. And it's not just the wicked that are going to stand before God's judgment, before the white throne judgment of God. Every one of us will stand there and give an account. Amen. That's why we need an advocate with the Father. Amen. To be pardoned, to be forgiven. To be justified. Praise the Lord. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Listen. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Does he know you? Are you in his book? Have you been blotted out? You can be blotted out of his book. Amen. He's going to say to many, I never knew you. You know why? Because they didn't answer the call. They did not answer the call. They did not respond to his voice. Jesus says, I know my sheep. They know my voice and they follow me. Amen. God knows those that are his. If you do not surrender to God, you're not his. You're not his. You have to surrender to him. You have to surrender to the truth. You have to be willing to be possessed by God, to become his possession. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Satan tried to thwart God's plans. Are you listening? But Jesus, the last Adam, came to restore, to re reconcile, to save that which was lost. Amen? I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, nobody on this earth is predestined to go to hell. Amen. When Jesus said to the Jews, you are of your father, the devil, he was not saying that they could never be saved. What he was saying to them is the same thing you and I were before we were born again, before we were awakened to understand the truth. You and I were also children of the devil. Amen. There's none righteous, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Why is it that some accept the Lord, some accept the truth, some open their heart to the truth, some hear his voice and obey his voice, and some don't? Why? Why is it that some of God's creation 
do not acknowledge him as God, as their creator. Why? What a mystery. What a mystery. Is that the mystery of all mysteries? Why some folks will not surrender their lives to Jesus, and some will. Why? Why is that? Why did a third of the angels follow Lucifer and the others didn't? Why is that? Now, we know we're given a choice. God's given us a choice. But why do some choose to rebel against the light, the truth? Why do they fight the truth? Why is it there are those that won't come to the light? I'm not asking you that question because I have the answer. I'm asking you that question because it, it stumps me. Why? Why? Why did, why did I come to the truth? Why was I willing to accept the truth? When the Lord s- spoke, why did I come to him? Why did I obey his voice? And why is it that others don't? I don't understand that. I don't believe that anyone before the foundation of the world was created by God, formed in the womb, that God did not predestine their lives to be with him in eternity. I don't think anybody was predestined. I don't think Judas, Judas wasn't predestined to be lost forever. So why is it that some come to the Lord and some don't? What a mystery. That's the mystery of all mysteries. Why some love the darkness and they will not come to the light. I don't know if I'll ever understand that one. That's a great mystery. That is a great mystery. That your name is in the book of life from the foundation of the world and it gets blotted out. I never knew you. Dear God, I never knew you. Did you know right here in this world, in the Jewish religion, in their traditions, and in Muslims, the Islam, if their children convert to another religion, they disown their children as though they were never born. And some of them even kill their children. And God says, I don't even know you. Even though I created you, even though I formed you in the womb, I never knew you. How is that? Dear God. Dear God, people. Does the Lord know you? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Are you positive it's there? Jesus said to those that were rejoicing because the devils were subject to them, he said, don't rejoice because of that. Rejoice because your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Praise God. If your name's there, you'd be rejoicing. Amen. Amen. You can't help but be rejoicing if you know your name's there. Maybe that's why a lot of God's people don't rejoice. Maybe that's why you don't have a lot of joy, because you don't believe that your name's in the book. 
that you don't know. Let's go a step further. It's one thing to say, I believe, but do you know it? Do you know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life without any question? If you knew it, you'd rejoice. You would rejoice if you knew your name was there and that nobody can take your name out except you. God will blot your name out if you want him to. Amen. There are those on the earth that will not retain God in their knowledge. That's sad. That is sad. A soul, people. A soul. You have a soul. Eternal soul. Going to spend eternity either in hell or in heaven with God Almighty. We've got to begin to understand how precious the soul is. When we think in terms of a lost soul, dear God, that's not like an animal dying. Amen. That's not like a cat or a dog dying. That's a soul. They're trying to say today that animals have a soul. No, they don't. No, they don't. They have life, but they don't have a soul. Amen? No, they don't. Sometimes you think they do, though, because of the way they act. Sometimes they're more human than humans. But that's because they were created by God. And God put that in them. And did you know God can actually work through an animal, right? God can touch a person through an animal. Amen. God worked through the donkey, right? The dumb ass he spoke through there to the prophet. But God can use an animal to touch a person's heart. And he does it all the time, I believe. Amen. But they don't have a soul. Animals don't have a soul. Amen. When God created you, he created you to live forever. And his plan was not for you to live in eternity in hell, in the lake of fire. That was not his plan. But God gave you a will to make a choice. Again, I don't know why some choose to rebel against God. Some choose not to come to the light. I don't know why. I can't fathom it. I cannot fathom it. In fact, I can't even understand how that Moses and Saul that later became Paul, how that they could say, blot my name out of your book? How do they? I don't know how anybody could do that. It's a very warped understanding. Is your soul spending eternity in hell worth anybody being saved? How foolish. You're going to spend eternity in hell in the lake of fire so that God will save the lost? What about your soul? That tells me they didn't have a clear understanding of what they were saying. I don't want to spend eternity in hell in the lake of fire, people. How about you? That's why Jesus went to the cross. That's why he gave his life. Amen. Why would he suffer like no man's ever suffered? Why would he go to Calvary? There's just one reason. Because he loves me. He really loves me. And he loves you. Amen. The Lord loves me. The Lord loves you. 
In fact, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God bless you.